Three weeks have passed since the reopening ceremony and the engines were hard at work. Timothy managed the yard at Sheffield, Daniel managed the yard at Manchester, Edwin pulled passenger trains and Stephen was put in charge of goods trains. He did his best but the workload became heavier and heavier and soon it was too much for the old engine. Mr. Salmon knew that and he decided to buy another engine. Stephen, I'm glad to inform you that the new engine will be arriving in a few hours. Make that a few minutes. Sir, did you buy two engines? No, why do you ask? It certainly sounds like two. Right, Stephen. Just then, two unnumbered BR Black LMS 7F steamed past. What? Let's go meet them! Steven's driver opened his regulator and the V2 slowly moved forward. When he was out of his shed, he saw that the two 7F stopped at the platform. He whistled to let the signalman know that he was on the main line. He then slowly kept puffing forward and then he gently stopped next to the newcomers. Hello there, I'm Steven. What's your name? Neither of us has a name. Nor a number. Hello, my name's Timothy. And I'm Edwin Salmon, General Manager of the Woodhead Line. Now, may I ask you, which one of you is 53800? We don't know, sir. Our number somehow slipped off. There was a lot of wind and rain on our way. Somehow on purpose? Sir, you wouldn't think that... I don't know, but what shall we call you? From now on, you'll be known as Nigel, and you as William. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Now, reverse back into the sheds. There are some workmen that will apply on your new numbers. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. The two engines started to back away. When they were out of sight, Mr. Salmon turned to Stephen. Stephen, do you help me choose which one to send back? Yes, of course, sir. Over the course of the next few days, Mr. Salmon kept a close eye on the new engines. They performed brilliantly with every duty assigned to them.
Well, Steven, I'm lost. Which one? I'd say none of them. They're both keen to work. Maybe you're right. I don't know. I'll have to talk to the board of directors about it. Alright. The next day, Nigel was pulling a goods train. He was making good time along the way, but as he passed Penniston Station, he suddenly came to a halt. Hey, what's going on? You've got no water left. You were too impatient, and we couldn't fill you up properly. Stephen soon came to the rescue with Mr. Salmon on board. You've disappointed me, Nigel. I wanted to keep you and send William away, but I don't know now. I really don't know. Sorry, sir. Later that day, Edwin was pulling a passenger train. As he passed Woodhead Station, his driver slowly applied his brakes. Nothing happened. Edwin's brakes had failed. The weight of the coach started pushing Edwin down the gradient. Help! We've got no brakes! William was shunting at Dinting Station. Just then, the signalman ran up to him and quickly explained the situation. Oh, come on then. We've got no time to lose. Let's stop that train. William positioned himself on the main line, and when he heard the steam engine approaching, he slowly started to move. Edwin eventually caught up to him. William's driver then applied his brakes, and the cavalcade started to slow down. And by the time they reached Broadbottom Station, they stopped. Is a close one. Mr. Salmon then stepped down from the train. William, I was on that train and I must say that was a great stop. I want to be fair, William, but I don't know. I really don't know. Mr. Salmon turned around and walked away towards the station. What was all that about? I don't know.
That evening, Mr. Salmon, Mr. Robinson and Mr. Philipson came to the sheds to talk to the engines. Your attention please, your attention please. We've come here tonight to tell you the news. First of all, we decided that both Nigel and William will stay, but Nigel will be painted in Prussian blue, so there won't be any more mistakes. Second, the British Railways have contacted us and told us that they had inspectors on our railway, and one of them was on Edwin's train today, and they've seen how William stopped the runaway. They said that they cut the line from the British Railways, which means it's hours from now on. The rest of the speech was drowned in the chorus of loud whistles and cheers. The line and the engines on it were preserved at last.